Welcome to the Personal Injury Law Show, viewers. This is a show that talks about everything to do with personal injuries in Australia, but in particular Victoria. We talk about slips and falls, transport accidents, work accidents, medical negligence, and everything else. My name's Tony Carbone, personal injury lawyer of over 25 years experience. With me tonight, I've got a young partner in a law firm that deals with compensation claims, Nunce Tepteya. Good evening, Nunce. Tony, Ted, good evening, viewers. And also Ted Dorman, who's an engineer, working with Mark Dorman and Partners Proprietors Limited. He's an engineer and agronomist, also has a degree in commerce from Melbourne University. Good evening, Ted. Hi, Tony, how are you? And so, Tony, what's in the news this week? Look, there's been a lot of things in the news, but the first story I want to talk about is this young girl that was at Mac Robinson High School. She went to a cadet camp mm. and fell into a fire. Yeah, the background to it, Tony, is that uh, she was on this cadet camp, uh, was cutting a pumpkin, I think just with a, an army knife, uh, cut herself, I suppose, with the blood, she fainted and then fell into a fire. So it's a pretty unusual set of circumstances, but severe uh, scarring, disfigurement and also psychological effects. So Some of the allegations on the issue of breach were that the knife that she was given was too small, it was inadequate, uh, the lack of supervision, the loading was inadequate and a large open fire which was dangerous. Ted, you're an expert, what do you say about those allegations? Well, they're all quite interesting and potentially all relevant in their own way. On the, the issue of uh, the, the knife and the size of a knife, of course, we all, we all know that if an object, particularly a sharp object, mm. that you're using is uh, too small in your hand, you might have trouble trying to manipulate it. And uh, for that one, uh, that could have easily... Uh, uh, have led to, uh, have led to a problem. problem here. And but the inadequate lighting is pretty significant, I would have mm. thought, next to a campfire. Yeah, more, more importantly, the, the additional factor here of the lighting seems to have been significant here in that you, you need enough light, it goes without saying almost, to be able to, to see a hazard and to see where you are in space. Is it foreseeable so, though, Tony? Of course it's foreseeable. So? Yeah. You've got a situation where the knife's no good, the lighting's poor, uh, you're near a campfire. Yeah, look, you can easily stumble into it. That's what happened. She's got severe disfigurement yeah. and she's very, very badly uh, damaged. I think, Tony, the other thing that was, was mentioned there with, that caught my eye was the fact that it was an open, open fire. Yes. So the, the question as to whether or not there was uh, protection um, yeah. around the fire, that's something someone uh, like ourselves would be looking for as well. Of course. The other interesting story is one that came out the other day. There's hundreds of people dying in our hospitals every year due to a lack of... Mal, uh, due to malnutrition and also first, There's 750 people, according to this FOY that was obtained, that says that people aren't being fed properly in the hospitals. Mm. And it's just alarming. What's your take on that, Ted? Well, people in uh, hospitals uh, aren't necessarily the, the, the same as, as the rest of the population in that they're often they're going to be injured or they're going to have limited capacity. Um, they might be uh, older and therefore have uh, more trouble opening things or uh, generally getting access to things like as described in this uh, article. I think they were talking about uh, uh, having it being difficult to open uh, packages or yes, something like yes. that was uh, what you'd be well, expecting. I'd love to see the stats even further Nancy, because I'd imagine a lot of these people would be frail and yep. infirm. I'm sure I looked at, I think the, the categories would be towards the latter end of their stages, but I think globally, you know, from my point of view, again, it's another resource issue that uh, hospitals are, are lacking. It's all funds, money, staff, and, you know, there's been a lot of deaths in hospital and not getting to, to beds and the like, so I think it's just another example of the lack of funds that hospitals don't have anymore. Well, it's a sad indictment on our system when we've got situations where people are dying because they can't be mm. fed or they don't yeah. get any, you know, water, for argument's exactly. sake. Yeah, yeah. Let's go on to the first of our um, stories tonight because we're doing expert witnesses and that's why Ted's on the show. Under the County Court Civil Procedure Rules 2008, the definition of an expert witness is a person who has specialised knowledge based on the person's training, study or experience. Mm. Now, Nunz, we use them quite a bit, the uh, engineers, don't we? Look, they are very important in any, I suppose, litigation case because uh, a core element in every common law case is fault and, and negligence. And it's not enough for you know, a, a plaintiff or you know, their lawyers to say, yeah, we think you're at fault. You need someone to back that up with expert evidence. And you know, we're no engineers, we're just lawyers. So we need someone to back that up, whether it be a medical expert I said, or an uh, you know, engineer, ergonomic, ergonomic expert. You need someone to support your case. And well, that's why they're, they're vital. 
Ted, one of the key elements, I guess, to every case that you go to investigate and inspect is the assumptions you have to make about what's actually happened. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely, and that, that forms a, a big part of uh, the data gathering, I guess, um, and data checking that, that we have to do. Yes. You know, it is a problem once because before a case gets to court, nothing's actually proven, so there's a lot of assumptions going on. Let's go to the first matter we want to deal with. It's a case involving an occupier and a refrigerator. Yeah. Can you give me a bit of a background to that? Yeah, look, it's an interesting case and, look, unusual, but uh, one that uh, said, uh, you know, it went for quite a number of uh, years from what I understand. But this particular plaintiff uh, was on a fishing trip with his family uh, in Warrnambool, went to a, a mobile petrol station, went to a, uh, I suppose, just a, a fridge with, uh, full of, um, uh, what was it, bait, bait fridge, uh, stepped towards it, foot underneath was caught, uh, not caught, but it slid underneath the, um, the fridge. And at the bottom of the fridge, there was two protruding pipes. And as he left to, uh, as he turned to uh, go to the register, foot got caught, fell to the ground and, uh, you know, damaged his back quite severely. So quite Ted, unusual, but, uh, mm. you know, happened nevertheless. Ted, you investigated this matter. Can you yeah. give us a bit more of the scientific um, mm. information? in mm. terms of trying to prove negligence? Mm. Well, the, the first, well, among other things, uh, the first thing that uh, we were interested in, um, or I was interested in, is finding out um, how big that gap was mm. underneath the, the chest fridge and whether or not, indeed, it was even possible for, for the gentleman to get his foot stuck. And, of course, um, to do that, we went out and had an inspection and I measured the, the chest fridge and it found that, indeed, it was a big enough gap, just enough for a bloke of his size to stick his Dunlop folly mm. underneath, just enough, and just enough distance also to clear the protrusion that Nunzio referred to, and then get caught on the way out. That's right. Well, you recreated the events effectively. That's right. So, yeah, accident recreation was important here. Just to, to, to satisfy myself and to explain to the court that, yes, indeed, the, the story that the, the guy has come up with is indeed fair and reasonable, and I think, and I agree, with uh, his version of events in that regard. Nuncio, yeah. this case was bitterly contested, yep. and the opposition came up with their own expert, didn't they? That's right, look, because uh, obviously Ted, uh, through his business, came up with an expert report, and then in response, you know, as uh, is not unusual, the defendant came up with their expert report, which I suppose refuted a lot of uh, Ted's suggestions or, or opinions. Um, and, and I suppose that then puts the case uh, on a double-edged sword, you know, which way does it lead? And, uh, you know, developments came about later where we actually found the fridge uh, as to the actual fridge in question, and then a subsequent report was prepared in that regard. Look, we'll come back to this after the break, so viewers, please stay tuned. We're going to a sponsor's break.